Perfect. Yeah, just let me know when to. Start. Uh, just a second. Just a second. Okay. Uh, right now we uh, we are recording. So um, hi everyone. Uh, it's a great pleasure to have uh, Dr. Thomas Promley. Uh, he is a quantum machine learning developer at uh, Xanadu. Uh, I can't tell you how much uh, I'm excited about this uh, talk and and and. Uh, uh, the things that uh, we will share together. Uh, I think that uh, Professor Ahmed Yunus would like to, to say a few words first and then uh, the mic will be uh, yours, uh, Dr. Tom. Uh, you'd like to thank uh, Dr. Tom for being with us today. It's really a pleasure and we are really excited uh, about the talk about, uh, about Betty Lane. Uh, so um, we are looking forward for more cooperation with Dr. Tom in the future. And uh, 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 the, the mic is yours, Dr. Tom. Uh, please go ahead. Thank you very much. Yeah, so this talk is uh, quantum machine learning with Penny Lane, really with a focus on how to do machine learning in, in Penny Lane. So it's kind of a more technical talk. I understand you, you, I think there was a talk earlier on more general quantum machine learning. So this is definitely digging deeper into the code. So before all that, let's just have an introduction to Xanadu, just uh, in case you haven't heard of us. Um, just a bit of info. So here are all of our faces. Um, founded about four or five years ago now, 2016, um, we've got our Series A round of funding in the bank um, and we're based in Toronto. So our goal is to build quantum computers that are useful and accessible to people everywhere. So build is also a key part. We actually have a hardware team as well. So I'm from the software team, so that's going to be the focus of this talk, but we do have a massive focus on photonics specifically. So we have a quantum photonic hardware team, um, and that's the underlying tech that we're working on. So in terms of hardware, we focus on things like computing, communication, and sensing. And on the software side, really the idea is to ultimately to drive usage of, of the hardware, and we can do that in a number of ways. One of the focuses is quantum machine learning. Um, which is the focus of this talk. But more generally, we have uh, and are working on increasingly sort of bringing up our Xanadu Quantum Cloud. So this will be things like the ability to do machine learning in Penny Lane on the cloud, also to sample from our hardware, from um, using strawberry fields, which is another one of our, um, of our software suites. So Penny Lane, this is the topic of, of the current talk. This is our software suite. It's Python based and focused on quantum machine learning, or more generally, we say automatic differentiation. So, um, yeah, I hope we're going to have a lot of fun during this talk, just uncovering some of the um, some of the elements of Penny Lane. But before we do, I want to mention QHack. So QHack is a well, you can kind of think of it like a conference. It's actually a quantum hackathon, um, and the idea is that we're going to have a mixture of um, so some talks. Actually, let me load up the. Uh, okay, so this is the web page. Um, so qhack.ai. We will have uh, a really, really impressive list of, of speakers. So there's going to be talks from all of these people, followed by. Um, so that's at the start, and then it will be. Um, so, so some streaming sessions, followed by a hackathon. So the hackathon will be. Uh, we have some fixed questions. Like so there's like a couple of rounds of different questions on, say, optimization or various problems in quantum machine learning. And then there'll be a final round, which is a free form hackathon. So that will be mo there's more freedom in, in what you focus on. So it's all free, even if you're just uh, curious about uh, like seeing the, the streaming sessions, feel free to sign up. Um, you'd be welcome to join. So and also it's, it's strongly linked to, to Penny Lane, of course. Uh, we imagine most of uh, the hackathon will involve use of Penny Lane. So yeah, that's that's QHack. And now back to Penny Lane. Uh, let's talk about just the core of Penny Lane, what, what, what's involved. So at a high level, um, it's really a functional interface. So you might have a quantum circuit. And you define this as a function. So you within your function, you build up a series of gates. So I think you can see my pointer now, right? Uh, so we might have some rotations and X rotations, uh, a block of, of controlled gates. So this is all within a function. And then we return the thing that we're measuring. So some probabilities or an expectation value. Um, the next step when you build a penny lane circuit is to add this at QML.QNode dev. 
So this is, this is a decorator, and what it does is it binds this circuit to a specific device. So it's saying, okay, how do we actually execute this circuit? Well, we do it on this particular device. And I'll talk more shortly about um, the, the different devices available. Uh, also, by the way, feel free to stop me, ask a question if anything's unclear during the talk. Um, so aside from this, ability to construct a circuit and to return expectation values, me measurements, etc. The core part of Penny Lane is the ability to also get the derivative of these quantities with respect to parameters of the circuit. So here we, here's one circuit, this FN1. We have some rotations and a CNOP. So the rotation has this X. So this is, imagine it's a controllable rotation. Um, and you might want to take the derivative of your expectation value with respect to this rotation. So yes, instead of just returning, you can also access this derivative. And how you do it, there's a different, there's a couple of different approaches to calculating this derivative in Penny Lane. This is all done behind the scenes. So you really just specify a diff method uh, when you define your Q node here. So there's a couple of ways. There's this parameter shift rule. I'm not sure if it's been mentioned in any of the preceding talks, but the idea is that it's an exact measure of the gradient of certain quantum circuits where the gates are things like basic uh, uh, rotations, uh, also including C knots. Um, so this parameter shift rule is exact. And what you do, it's a bit like finite difference. You have a forward shift and a backward shift, and you take the difference. But unlike finite difference, um, the shift is much larger. So it's actually a pi over two shift instead of an infinitesimal shift. And the result is that you actually have an exact measure of the gradient. So this is the default. When you ask for the gradient in Penny Lane, it uses this parameter shift rule. So there's some alternatives. Of course, there's finite difference, so the, the infinitesimal shift forward and backwards. Um, and then there's some intermediate ones that are only compatible with simulators. So we have backpropagation. So you can imagine, um, although we have a quantum circuit, really, when you're on a simulator, it's just a series of linear algebra operations. So applying a make essentially applying a lot of matrices. Um, so this is amenable to back propagation um, on using the simulator. So say if you had TensorFlow or any of these um, differentiable programming libraries, you can use this back propagation approach. Um, and I think they'll become clearer. We have a few demos as well in this talk. And then there's a couple of different other um, sort of quantum based approaches. So there's this reversible approach, which relies on the ability that you can kind of reverse the circuit by doing the uh, like the inverse unitary. So this is the remember this is the default, um, but potentially these are faster when you have a simulator. In terms of uh, devices, we have a couple of built-in simulators just to easily build up circuits, start testing and playing playing around with Penny Lane before you can then um, choose to work with uh, hardware devices or or other simulators outside of Penny Lane. So within Penny Lane, you can have, uh, this is the, the typically used one, default qubit. This is just a standard uh, state vector-based simulator, uh, qubit-based. Um, and we have, an, so this Gaussian one is for continuous variable systems. And we have a few more evolutions for speed, so using, say, tensor networks, for example. Uh, but you'll typically see demonstrations using default qubit. So we have these built-in simulators, but of course, the another cool facet of Penny Lane is the ability to pick a device that's not just something that's built in. You can interact with other libraries out there. So maybe you want to write a Penny Lane circuit and run it using a suck um, simulator backend. So actually, you can interact with CERC, IBM Qiskit, uh, Strawberry Fields is our other photonic based Xanadu library. There's also Rigetti Forest. Microsoft, AWS as well, we want to add the logo here, I guess. So there's a lot of different backends that you can execute a Penny Lane circuit on, not just the simulator, but also hardware devices. So you can run on um, the Qiskit uh, chips, for example. On the other hand, so there's this, on the right hand side, there's this ability to have freedom to choose your device. But there's also, because it's a, Penny Lane is the quantum machine learning library, we want to care about how you do the differentiability, um, how you differentiate your circuit. 
So in standard machine learning, there's two well-known libraries, PyTorch and TensorFlow. And these provide these uh, automatic differentiation capabilities uh, when you do, say, standard um, uh, composition of functions. So you might have a neural network, for example, so some matrix multiplication, some additions of vectors. And differentiating back through a neural network, this is supported in both of these libraries. So these are the, um, like the, the interfaces for differentiable programming on the classical side. So of course, Penny Lane wants to be compatible with that. So we provide the ability to differentiate the quantum circuit and then return that the, uh, um, as something that's compatible with the various classical differentiation libraries, so PyTorch, TensorFlow. We also say NumPy here. There's actually a package called Autograd that supports a basic um, differentiability using only NumPy-based functions. So really we see Penny Lane as this kind of jigsaw in the middle, this jigsaw piece um, that lets you go on different devices and also choose whatever uh, differentiable interface that you prefer. So, okay, I've said a lot of stuff. Let's do a demo. Let's do something, do something more practical. So hopefully this will work. I have a Jupyter notebook here. Let me know, shout out if you can't see this. Um, so this first demo, just let's look at the building blocks of Penny Lane. So this is how you import it, standard import Penny Lane. We import it as TML. Um, so this is all in Python, remember? Um, and then also we, if you want to use this NumPy differentiability, you have to import NumPy from within Penny Lane. So we do from Penny Lane import NumPy as NP. Now we set up a device. So we have this default qubit device, that's the standard one. And Okay, here's a pre-built circuit. So actually we have some controllable rotations here. So it's a vector of dimension three and it's a three qubit circuit. So each rotation goes on one of the qubits and then we have a block of controlled not operations. And we finally say, let's return the expectation value of a Pauli Z measurement on the first qubit. So that's a circuit. Now we load some parameters. You can see the theta's here. Because we imported NumPy from Penny Lane, we actually have this additional requires grad equals true argument. So this says, um, this, this kind of specifies that these thetas, uh, we care about differentiating with respect to these parameters. So now we execute our circuit. This is what, we, what comes out of the circuit. So we have some expectation value of the Pali Z. So we expect it to be between minus one and one. Okay. It's, some value here. You can also draw the circuit. So if you if it wasn't clear my explanation, this is what it looks like more practically. But now is here's, here's the sort of magic of Penny Lane. We can get the gradient. So now we've loaded this QML.grad. It returns another function that we can call where we can then evaluate the gradient with respect to these parameters. So now this is the derivative of this with respect to the three thetas. Cool. So that's very basic introduction to Penny Lane. What if you want to do something more like optimization? Well, we have some built-in optimizers, QML gradient descent optimizer. So this is a standard gradient descent. Um, and yeah, this is just a simple optimization loop. Because we've got a simple circuit of, um, you can see here we're returning Pauli Z. And we have some three rotations here. It's really, we know that the minimum we expect from this circuit is minus one. So not too surprising, but yeah, just to see what an optimization loop looks like, this is, this is it um, using the Penny Lane, um, at least using the NumPy interface of Penny Lane. What if we want to do a different interface? So instead of the NumPy Autograd interface, what if we want to have Torch? Um, so one of the other differentiation uh, libraries. So really all we do is we swap when we define, um, when we're pairing off our circuit with a device, we specify the interface to be torch. And now what we get back is a torch tensor. So instead of just an, a, a float or an NumPy array, we get it at something that's compatible with torch. And if you then go and do other manipulations of this number in torch, the whole thing is still differentiable. Finally, um, let's try the TensorFlow interface. So we just switch to TensorFlow here, TF. But we also pick a different device. So now instead of the built-in default qubit simulator, 
we're picking something that's run remotely on Qiskit IBM. So using the IBM Q um, uh, backend. So specifically using the Chasm simulator. So what happens if we execute this? Well, this sends us to the IBM servers. Um, there's some processing and it should come back shortly, hopefully. This, uh, this is just a warning, I think, to do with uh, timestamps. I don't think it's too important. So yeah, here we are, we have our TensorFlow tensor now come back and yep, it's just, if we then built up TensorFlow uh, functions on top of this, like multiplications, uh, use it within a matrix, for example, we could still differentiate through our quantum circuit. So that was a quick demo, any questions from now? Okay, if not, just wanna mention a few more features of, of Core Penny Lane. So one thing you can do is load existing code from other. Um... Hi. I'm, I'm just saying that uh, everything looks okay for now. Uh, th there, there are no questions at all. So you can continue. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Perfect. So yes, one thing you do is load um, other circuit, circuits designed in other quantum programming uh, languages. So for example, you might have a, a Qiskit based circuit. Um, so here we have one that we've built up here. That can then be loaded into something that's compatible with Penny Lane. So we have this QML dot from Qiskit. So why would you want to do this? Um, well, on the one hand, it, it gives you a lot of freedom on what device to execute on. So you could have written a circuit in Qiskit and you think, oh no, I need to then, I want to maybe run it on um, AWS, uh, AWS bracket. How do I do that? Well, you can then just convert it to a Penny Lane um, Q node uh, or circuit, and then pick a uh, pick the uh, AWS bracket device. So it gives you freedom on what device to run on. You're not kind of stuck, but also it adds in naturally the ability to differentiate. So you have this automatic differentiation included. So now you can then you have these controllable features, these rotations. When you use it through Penny Lane, you can differentiate your expectation value. Finally, I wanted to mention, um, so of course, Xanadu is building up uh, quantum hardware, um, photonics based, and we want to, that to be available for use through Penny Lane. So yeah, we have a, a separate package called Penny Lane Strawberry Field. This essentially interfaces the two libraries. Um, so it al allows you to run, you can design within Penny Lane a photonics based circuit and then run it using the Strawberry Field simulators or using our remote hardware backend. So if anybody's curious, there is a sign up um, on our website for access to the hardware device, or just drop me a message and, uh, and I'll put you in the right direction. So that was really the core of Penny Lane, but what can we do in terms of interesting machine learning? Um, so one thing I wanna to touch on is creating hybrid models. So if you've ever used TensorFlow um, or Torch, you might've, built the computational graph and really what that graph does is it it represents a sequence of um, applications of different functions so you might have if you have a neural network it's just a repetition of a matrix multiplication add a vector apply a bias then onto that matrix multiplication different matrix add another different vector and some bias again so you end up having this graph where you can pass forward through each of the uh, each of the functions, and you can also differentiate backwards through the functions. So each you can think of this graph. Each node represents an application of a function. So say a matrix multiplication, and you go forward and you get some output. Um, so this might be some estimate of um, some some machine learning problem, for example, might be a classification. Uh, so what about instead of having one of these nodes or all of the nodes being a classical function, like a sign, what if we swap one or some of them out to be a quantum circuit? So yeah, here we might have some circuit where we input data from the previous one through, uh, like from the previous node through gate parameters in our circuit. And then we output a measurement here, which then feeds onto the, the rest of the, the computational graph. So this is really the idea of a hybrid. So we have a network where some of the nodes 
are quantum. So a, a quantum node or a Q node, you'll see this crop up a lot in Penny Lane as, as a word. Um, so this is just posing the question. Um, for example, more concretely, what if we had a qubit based device paired with a, a photonic device? So you could have some input data coming in here, comes through a, um, some qubit circuit. We can, in the middle, apply some classical uh, applications, a sine function, for example. And then we have a photonic circuit, uh, and it all comes out to, to make some hybrid composite that depends on these two circuits. So this is a very interesting idea in terms of why you might want to do this. I think it's, um, I think it's really an open question, to be honest. Um, you can often think of a lot of the uh, existing near-term quantum algorithms as hybrids already. So, for example, VQE, right? Variational quantum eigensilver. This is a combination of um, a quantum circuit and some classical elements for optimization. So, really what we're saying is let's recognize the ability to make hybrids and explore a bit more what you can do with these hybrids. And I think the potential power comes from the ability to combine smaller circuits, smaller quantum circuits together to maybe do something powerful. So it could be something like um, for near-term devices when we've got a lot more noise, let's add some supporting classical layers and see what we can do. Maybe we can still get some sort of quantum advantage without needing the extreme width or depth that we would do of a single quantum circuit were it to do everything like all by itself. So you can certainly combine different um, hardware, devices, qubits, even photonic based. Um, but also in Penny Lane, of course, because we have this automatic differentiation naturally included, you can then differentiate very easily back through the whole hybrid graph. So you can, yeah, definitely these, I guess, already using things like TensorFlow and PyTorch, you can go through and backpropagate through any of the sort of yellow orange um, boxes. The penny lane allows you to then include these green quantum boxes when you back propagate through. So yeah, it's not just a case of building a hybrid where you can only do a forward pass, where you can only evaluate the result. You can also train this hybrid. Now, one thing specifically that, that comes to mind is, um, so when you have a neural network, you, you have say a series of, of different layers. What if we swapped out one of the layers to be itself a quantum circuit. So you might have some um, some classical, some standard classical data coming in. It goes through one or a number of um, neural network, say feed forward layers, then passes through a quantum layer, then a final classical or, or a few feed forward layers, and then standard uh, machine learning, something like a softmax, for example. So that could be something interesting, and that's something that we've provided in Penny Lane. So Essentially, what you can do is you can have a penny lane circuit or keynote. You can convert that to a Keras layer. So that's something that's compatible with TensorFlow's Keras library for things like designing neural networks. So I actually have a demo for this. How are we doing for time? Okay, we're about halfway through. That's good. So, okay, let's just do a, a more machine learning oriented demo. So here we have a very simple data set. So this is the make moons data set from scikit-learn. It's just two different moons. Um, that one, one moon is of one class and the other moon is of the other class. And of course this is um, interesting because you can't perfectly, like you can't perfectly classify by having a, like a linear um, estimator. So you can't just draw a line between the two classes. So this is just a standard sort of trial data set from scikit-learn. And the question is, can we design a hybrid neural network with some classical layers and a quantum circuit to do this classification? So the first step is let's import Penny Lane as QML, standard imports, set up our device. Now we're going to set up our circuits or Q node as we call it in Penny Lane. So first thing we want to do is encode our data our classical data into the quantum circuit. So this is angle embedding. You can check out the details a bit more um, on our tutorials online, but really the idea is that we just do a rotation on each of the qubits um, based on, so you kind of have like an n-dimensional uh, vector of, of data coming in, and that's encoded onto n qubits where each qubit does a rotation corresponding to the vector. 
So this is how we embed our data. There's a, a variety of different embedding approaches. And then what we want to do is have some interesting circuits. So some set of gates um, that's controllable. And of course, you could manually place, say, OK, let's put a rotation here. Let's put another rotation here, some CNOTs over here. But it's kind of, um, you know, it's not clear where to put everything. And it's time intensive to des des like design your whole circuit. So we, we actually have some pre-built, um, uh, we call them layers. So uh, it's kind of the interior of the quantum circuit. So we have some pre-built blocks of gates where say so this one here it's doing some again some rotations on each of the qubits and then a block of uh of controlled nuts it's got an entangling block so we call this strongly entangling layers now there isn't a sort of best practice on which block of um of, of the inside of your circuit to use but there's a, a selection you can check out um, so if you go to our documentation on our template page there's strongly entangling layers, there's some other options as well. This is just one example. But the key is that this allows us to encode our controllable weights. Um, so this is, a, this is the thing that we want to train within our, our wider hybrid model. So, so far we've designed just the circuit, the quantum circuit. What about the classical elements, the, the layers before and after the circuit? So first thing we do is we convert the circuit to a keras layer. So, okay, this is just some, some specification of the keras layer. We have to say what our weights look like. So these are the trainable weights, so they have a certain shape. Then, okay, we use this QML QNN dot keras layer. So now this Q layer thing, this is essentially compatible with the rest of keras. So you can just treat it as you would any other keras layer. So now let's create our model. We have a classical uh, feed forward, like it, it's called dense in, in Keras. We have one of them. So it really corresponds to, to this picture here. Uh, so we have like a two, two neuron feed forward layer as the input. So this is C layer one. And then a two neuron feed forward layer as the output, where we subsequently apply a soft max. Then together we make that into a model. So this is now a hybrid model where we have classical layer, quantum circuit, and uh, final classical layer. So this is now a Keras-based hybrid model using Penny Lane as the quantum part. So yeah, the rest is just, if you've used Keras before, um, it's just optimization. So you can pick your optimizer, you compile a circuit, specify a loss, stuff like that, and you can train. So as you can see, um, I guess we want to track this this loss here. Should be going down. Um, okay, I think I set it for six epochs, so it should train after a while. And you can see it, it's training okay. I think the loss is coming down here. And just to emphasize, this is for me. This is cool because it's not just a neural network. It's a neural network where there's a quantum circuit in the middle of it, and we're training it. And we're hopefully about to use it for, for some machine learning tasks. And yeah, so this is like a, for me, it's, it's a super cool demonstration of creating very easily using Keras and Pen Penny Lane, creating a hybrid model. So, okay, the loss has come down. Accuracy seems to have, have come up. I should emphasize, this is a very trivial model. So we don't expect anything really to be, um, like it's, it's not going to be breaking any records, just having a two neuron input, a two neuron output, and then a two qubit circuit. Probably it's, it's just a very simple model, but let's see how it does. So now we have some testing data uh, and we look at the accuracy here. So we've got getting on a test data set 0 0.9, um, so 90% accuracy. We can also plot the predictions. And so the blue are predicted to be of one class and the orange are predicted to be of the other class now using our hybrid model. And to me, yeah, actually it looks like it's probably just fitted a straight line. Um, so maybe it's a very simple model. So, okay, it, it's probably not breaking the bank uh, in terms of, of great um, hybrid models, but it's just a proof of concept that 
we've managed to train a hybrid uh, model on a on a practical machine learning data set. So then you're free to play about with, okay, let's increase the number of layers before our quantum circuit, increase the width, uh, you know, all the typical hyperparameters that you have when designing a, uh, a neural network, plus some freedom on how you then design the quantum circuit in the middle. So, okay. Um, so that was the third demo. Now I want to mention, um, how are we doing for time, by the way? Okay, I think we, we're okay for time. So another facet of, of Penny Lane is uh, VQE. So I'm not sure if VQE has been mentioned much in the preceding talks, but the idea here is that you, um, you have a Hamiltonian and you want to uh, measure the expectation value of this Hamiltonian and then minimize this. So this would be equivalent to finding, say, the ground state energy of this Hamiltonian. Um, so this is all possible in, in Penny Lane. So here's an example of actually doing BQE in five lines. So first part is we have some Hamiltonian and we want to decompose it into um, like a linear sum of, so these observables, they're tensor products of Pauli matrices. So we do this decomposition and now these Pauli matrices are each paired off with um, a different measurement on our ANSATS circuit. So we have this QML.map, so we have a a specific circuit up to the measurement defined. And then we say, okay, match this circuit with say a ZZ measurement, and then another circuit with a Z identity measurement, then another one with a, I don't know, an XY. So this is sort of mapping off and creates a collection of, of these Q nodes that we can then optimize. Of course, we have our coefficients. So it's a linear sum of these uh, tensor products. So now when we have our expectation values of each of these, we want to multiply by the coefficient. So this is what this QML dot dot does. It does this multiplication and then adds up. So now this, this cost, it represents the expectation value of this Hamiltonian here. And this is just, so this is, this is just an example of it printing out here. And the objective in VQE is this is what we then minimize. So we have some ANSAT circuit and we want to get this to be as small as possible. Um, so yeah, again, sorry if this is repeating stuff that's already been covered in, in previous talks, but a typical use case of BQE is quantum chemistry. So you might have some molecule, you map it to a qubit Hamiltonian. By minimizing this Hamiltonian, you can find, um, say, the ground state energy of your molecule. You can then sort of derive additional information as well about uh, various quantum chemistry uh, quantities. So in Penny Lane, we have this plugin uh, we call it Penny Lane QChem, that supports essentially the first part of this tool chain. So yeah, here's, here's a really, really a map of it. Really the, what the QChem module does is you might have some input structure of a molecule. So you might say, have a hydrogen molecule where one hydrogen is here and the other one is here. You have very physical description. So you have this come in and the QChem module, it processes, there's all the mapping from, um, it, it creates the, chemical Hamiltonian and then maps that to a qubit based Hamiltonian. So this is the thing that comes out here, the convert to Penny Lane observable. So when you have a qubit Hamiltonian, this is then optimizable in, in standard Penny Lane. There's another little line here. This, this one here is um, through the QChem module, you, you have a few calculations where you then specify what the circuit looks like. So this active space, this defines potentially how we construct our quantum circuit. So now we have another demo. Um, okay, this third one here. So this is just a quick show of how to use the QChem module. So standard import. Um, now we're using the QChem module to create a qubit Hamiltonian corresponding to molecular hydrogen. Uh, this is at a certain distance for the two molecules, the two atoms. Um, so yeah, the output is a Hamiltonian and it looks like this. So we have the coefficients and we have the tensor products of parallel matrices. So now this is something that we can deal with on a quantum computer. It's a qubit based Hamiltonian. The rest is really just uh, optimizing. So we have our device. Um, I will go through this uh, slightly quicker because I think there's not too much time. Um, but this, this part here is really just 
designing um, or, or setting up our circuit. So we have some information, some quantum chemical information come in, and this then defines the circuit. So we use this UCCSD template. An alternative is if you don't want to use this chemical information, this might be a fairly deep circuit. You could just have a maybe more hardware friendly circuit. So let's say, okay, let's just have some rotations and the, the block of, of controlled uh, C knots, for example. So this is definitely something that's more amenable to running on hardware. It's much lower depth. So now this energy here, this is the expectation value of this circuit with respect to the Hamiltonian. Um, and we, then we pair off with the device as well. And we can evaluate the energy. So using, uh, we use the second circuit, so using the more hardware friendly one, um, the energy of the Hamiltonian is this. Now this is the thing that we want to minimize. So standard optimization loop in Penny Lane comes in. And we'll see this coming down towards, yeah, it's around this number, minus 1.07. This is the ground state energy of the hydrogen molecule at this specific separation. Uh, and these are the optimized parameters. You can then go on and do stuff like, let's look at the different uh, separations of the two atoms. And uh, yeah, okay, I, I guess I'll just quickly go through this. Essentially, you, you can re recreate this, um, this energy surface. So for different separations, what's the ground state energy? So, okay, um, now that for the final uh, section. So I just wanted to mention some recent features that we added to Penny Lane um, that I think even add more coolness to the library. So one thing is support for mixed states. So of course, practical quantum hardware is noisy. And um, when we have a simulator, we wanna be uh, prototyping the various circuits that we might want to make on hardware. Of course, that means that we want to make our simulators closer to the hardware, so we're sort of realistic. So we want to support a simulation of noise. So that's something we added recently. The difficulty, of course, is that you can't use a standard state vector, like a pure state simulator. You need to go to the, to say, represent your state as a density matrix. So that was the sort of difficulty there, but um, it's now a feature in Penny Lane. Um, so now you can have a circuit and add something like amplitude damping you have to be careful, you can't use default qubit. This is a pure state simulator, so you have to switch to the mixed state simulator that we have here. Now, another cool thing, so in Penny Lane, we're always almost obsessed with differentiability. So everything we, want, we add, we want to be able to differentiate with respect to. So amplitude damping, it has a noise parameter. And we now have support for differentiating this output with respect to the value of the noise parameter. So I think, I'm not sure what the application of that is. I think it's, it's interesting. For me, it's, it might be something like error mitigation could be interesting. Um, but often we just, uh, we're looking at unlocking all of the, the potential features for differentiability and then opening up to the community to, to then research potential use cases. Uh, another thing I wanted to mention is, um, so this one I guess is, is fairly, uh, it's a bit more behind the scenes, but it's quite cool. Um, so, a few months back in Penny Lane, you couldn't do something like square root within your circuit. So now you can do things like square root, cosines, you can do manipulation of your inputs, of, of, so the inputs to the function. You can still do manipulation within the circuit and then support differentiability with respect to them. So it seems like a minor thing, but it um, sort of unlocks a bit of power to have a lot more freedom in how you, say, combine parameters together and then uh, do, do transformations upon them. The last thing I wanted to mention was QAOA. So I believe you had a, a talk that went into the depths of QAOA. So I, I guess I won't go too much into the details of how it works, but as I'm sure you know, you have a cost and a mix of Hamiltonian and you apply like these repetitions of, of, uh, of the two pairs. Um, and then you learn these gamma ones, alpha ones. So you learn the gamma and alpha vectors. So this is now possible in Penny Lane to do this training. So let's consider in terms of say the minimum vertex cover problem. So you have, so here it's a graph based problem where you have these nodes and you want to find a minimum set of nodes so that each, uh, so your set touches each of the edges of your graph. So this would be an example here of, of the minimum vertex cover. 
so I think I can pretty much skip this slide. We basically map whatever optimization problem we have, some combinatorial optimization problem to a cost Hamiltonian. We fix a mixer, and then we have this predefined QAOA circuit, and we learn alpha and gamma. So uh, yeah, I want to show you this using Penny Lane. OK, how does this look like? Well, let's define our problem. We have, so this is the, um, we want to do the min vertex cover problem. So just a very simple graph. Um, you can see just by looking that 0, 2, and um, 1, 2 are options to, uh, like the two uh, optimized minimum vertex covers. So this is what we want to solve. How do you do this in Penny Lane? So we load this QAOA submodule and we pick the optimization problem. So min vertex cover, specify the graph, and the um, this is just there's, there's two versions of the problem. And what we get out again is another qubit Hamiltonian. So one qubit Hamiltonian for the cost and one for the mixer Hamiltonian. Now the rest is essentially setting up the QAOA circuit, the workflow of QAOA. So we define we have this cost and mixer. Um, for specific gamma and alpha. So that's really um, like the, the first two or, or pairs of these, these blocks. Now we define the whole circuit. So we build, we have, say, we use Hadamard to prepare the plus state on each of the qubits, and then we apply the sequence of, of QA away layers. So this is the whole circuit. And yeah, the rest is uh, we pair off the circuit with our cost Hamiltonian, as we do, as the objective is in, in QAOA, to measure this, the expectation value of the cost Hamiltonian. And yeah, the rest is, is penny lane um, optimization. So we can uh, optimize. Uh, oh. Just a second. You, you forgot to run something. Oh, yes. Yes. This, I think it's yeah. that one, right? Just that one? OK, thank this you. One, yes. And there we go. Um, so I just did a quick, uh, like a small number of steps. You might want to go for longer, which is what I did here. And yeah, the rest is, I guess um, we're pretty low on time. So I will uh, skip the details of this, but really you can then look at the prepared circuit, the optimized. So this would be the probabilities of the optimized state. And you can see that these two bit strings, the 1010 and 0110, these are the most likely ones. And then what do they correspond to, correspond to in the graph? Well, the 0110, this picks out the 1, 2 node. And the 1010, this picks out the 0 and the 2 node. So you can see within Penny Lane using QAOA, we found the min vertex cover. So cool. That was a quick demonstration of QAOA in Penny Lane. I believe that is the end of the talk. I'd like to re-mention QHack. So feel free to um, apply to that. I mean, you, you, it's not like you, you don't need to apply. You just um, join, basically. And yeah, we'd, we'd be excited to see you there. Otherwise, I'd like to open the floor to any questions. Thank you for listening. Thank you so much Thank for you. your time and your, uh, your presentation and your dedication. Uh, it is actually wonderful. And um, we actually have a question in, in, in the chat. Just a second, let me read it for you. Uh, so uh, regarding these differentiation methods inside Penny Lane, uh, was there any research done regarding use cases for finance, especially when uh, in finance, numerical methods are used for calculating financial option, like, for example, uh, something called uh, Greeks. So um, what, 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 what do you have to say about this? OK, yeah, it's, it's a good question. So far, we haven't really applied the differentiability of Penny Lane to finance. Um, so yeah, actually, I think it is very cool this ability to get the Greeks. Um, and we would totally welcome somebody looking into that. Um, we, do ha we have had other explorations into finance. So for example, you can do Quantum Monte Carlo in finance, a project that I worked on. Um, at Xanadu, and this is uh, this is not really using the differentiability of Penny Lane. It's just constructing the quantum phase estimation as a circuit. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think it's a very good question to how can you harness Penny Lane best to do a, a finance problem. Um, I guess I don't have like a great uh, direction of how to do it, but I'd be really curious to see if, if people have ideas. 
Okay, thank you so much. I think that uh, Pro Professor Ahmed Yunus would like to say something to you. Uh, I'd like to thank you very much for this really interesting talk. Uh, uh, actually, in, in Alexandria Quantum Computing Group, we are interested in, in, in Zanadu. Uh, that's why I'd like to ask you if you uh, can offer uh, online training for the members of the group on advanced topics in, in Zanadu, because we have many, many members uh, 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 would like to work in, in depth in, in, in Zanadu. Sure, Please yeah, Zanadu. I mean, okay. so, yeah, it's like we have a lot of uh, documentation online that I can definitely share to get started. And we can certainly, if we exchange emails, we can get the conversation started on, on the front of, you know, can we do any follow-up talks, anything dedicated um, to, yeah, to dig deeper with your team, certainly. Thank you. This is wonderful. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure. Okay, uh, I think there is another question here. So it says that uh, to check if I understood, uh, uh, is Penny Lane system uh, made to run on different architectures other than photonic ones, for example, like like qubits mm -hmm. and, and other stuff? Correct. Yeah. In, in fact, it's mostly focused on qubit architectures. So default qubit is the the simulator that we typically use, but um, yeah, so typically design circuits are in a qubit based, but you can execute on different hardware providers as well. So you could execute on IBM. You obviously need to have an account with IBM. Um, uh, you can execute on AWS. So they have a AWS bracket that can plug into IonQ, for example. So it's all a case of picking a, we call it plugins to Penny Lane. So it's kind of, you install a separate plugin. So you might say install a Penny Lane Kiskit plugin, and that unlocks the Kiskit set of devices where you can run on their simulators and their remote hardware. So yeah, typically qubit based, but we do have also support for um, continuous variable photonic systems. Um, so that's using our story fields uh, library. Um, and yeah, the cool thing is you can potentially sort of interlink the two. So you could have one part of a, you could have a circuit that's, quant that's qubit based, sorry, that then feeds onto a, photonic circuit and I, I don't know what yeah what cool things we could discover if we did that okay um thank you so much uh it is a great honor to to have you with us and uh and i'm looking forward for for, for more opportunities like this uh, like this one so uh yeah, is there anything else you would like to share with us about qhack or uh, what are like the, the minimum requirements to uh, to to, mm -hmm. to join it yes so it's it's really open to everybody. So even if you're just sort of vaguely interested and you think you might join for a couple of talks, feel free. We encourage people to join in as much as possible and to watch the uh, watch most of the talks and potentially join in with a hackathon. It's also a, a great way of, of training in Penny Lane. So of course it's not a dedicated um, like session to, to your group, but it might be a nice way to get like an initial taster as well. Um, so yeah, like we'll, we'll have a lot of problems that involve um, going into the depths of, of using Penny Lane, and we'll guide you through as well how to do that. Okay, again, again, uh, thank you so much, uh, and uh, I'm looking forward for, for for more opportunities like this one, and uh, perhaps the next time we can talk more and more about. Tonics and uh, say some final remarks and, and then we can uh, conclude this meeting. Okay, thank you very much. It was a pleasure to meet everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Very Bye. Bye-bye. Okay, I will uh, st uh, stop the recording right now.